Let G be a Hamiltonian graph, a graph containing a cycle that contains all the vertices of the graph. If K greater than zero vertices are deleted from G, then the resulting graph has at most K components. We'll be proving this necessary condition for Hamiltonian graphs in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. This is a very easy result to prove, but it's only so easy because we're going to use this other result that we already proved. This similar result states that for any graph G with a Hamiltonian path, if K vertices are deleted from G, then the resulting graph has at most K plus 1 components. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson I did proving this result. If you're a bit put off by that video's length, check the pinned comment of the video for a description of a more brief proof. But definitely check the video out if you're not familiar with this result. I'm going to assume that you are because we're going to use it in this proof. So it's a super easy proof, but before we do the proof, just one other quick thing we should make sure that we know. If any vertex is deleted from a Hamiltonian graph, the resulting graph will have a Hamiltonian path. For example, suppose the graph G is Hamiltonian, so it contains some Hamiltonian cycle we'll call C that has all the vertices of G, say V0, V1, V2, and so on, up to Vn, the final vertex of the graph, and then returning to V0. So if we delete any vertex from this Hamiltonian graph G, the resulting graph will contain a Hamiltonian path. For example, suppose we delete the vertex V0 from the graph G. Then this part of the cycle, going from V1 to Vn, will be a Hamiltonian path that exists in G minus V0. If we delete V1 from G, then this part of the cycle going from V2 all the way up to Vn and then V0 is a Hamiltonian path in G minus V1. If we delete V2 from G, then the part of the cycle following V2 going all the way up to V0 and then to V1 is a Hamiltonian path in G minus V2. So if we have any Hamiltonian graph that's got some Hamiltonian cycle, a cycle containing all the vertices of the graph, if we delete any one vertex from that graph, the resulting graph will have a Hamiltonian path, a path containing all the vertices. I assume we're probably all already familiar with that fact, but if you're not, jot down a quick proof of it. It's a pretty basic result and certainly a useful one. But the thing is, since when we delete a vertex from a Hamiltonian graph, the resulting graph has a Hamiltonian path, but not necessarily a Hamiltonian cycle, we can't prove this result using induction on the number of vertices of the Hamiltonian graph. Which is why we're going to need to use this result instead. So let's go ahead and get to the proof pretty quick and easy. We'll begin by saying, of course, let G be a Hamiltonian graph. We want to show that if we delete k vertices from G, where k is greater than zero, the resulting graph will have at most k components. And we need to specify that k is greater than zero, because if we delete no vertices from a Hamiltonian graph, the resulting graph will still just have the one connected component of the Hamiltonian graph, and one is greater than zero. So the result doesn't hold for k equals zero, which is why we got to specify k is greater than zero. So to start talking about deleting k vertices from g, we'll say let s be a subset of the vertex set of g. Since we want to delete more than zero vertices, we'll say that s is not equal to the empty set, and we'll call the cardinality of s k, which is, of course, greater than zero since s isn't the empty set. Since s is not equal to the empty set, it must contain at least one vertex. So let's name one of those vertices. We'll say let v be an element of s. Then what do we know about the graph g minus v? Well, since g is a Hamiltonian graph, then the graph G minus V must contain a Hamiltonian path. This is important, of course, because it means that we can apply this yellow result. 
that if we delete k vertices from g minus v, the resulting graph will have at most k plus 1 components. So then, how many components does the graph g minus v minus the vertex set s have? And I'll quickly point out this notation. We're saying that the cardinality of s is equal to k, but k of a graph is also common notation for the number of components of the graph. So that's what this means. It's the number of components in the graph g minus v minus the vertex set s. You might think, well, S has K vertices, so we're deleting K vertices from G minus V, so when we apply the above result, that tells us that the number of components in this graph is at most, or less than, or equal to, K plus 1. But we can actually do better than this, because we're not deleting K vertices from G minus V. We know that because V is one of the K vertices of S but v is not a vertex in g minus v because it's been removed from the graph. So when we subtract s from g minus v, we're actually only deleting k minus 1 vertices from g minus v. And so applying this above result in yellow actually tells us that the number of components in the graph g minus v minus s is less than or equal to k minus 1 plus 1, or k. I'll make that point one more time. Since the graph g minus v doesn't contain v, when we subtract the vertex set s from g minus v, we're only deleting k minus 1 vertices. So the above result in yellow about graphs with Hamiltonian paths tells us that the number of components in this graph is less than or equal to k minus 1 plus 1, which is, of course, k. Then the last important thing we have to notice, what do we know about the graph g minus v minus s? Well, since v is an element of s, g minus v minus s is the same as the graph g minus s. Because since v is an element of s, we're deleting the same vertices here as we are here. g minus v minus s is equal to g minus s. And so, of course, the number of components in the graph g minus s is less than or equal to k. And that concludes the proof. We've just proven that deleting any k vertices from a Hamiltonian graph results in a graph with at most k components. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove this fun little necessary condition for Hamiltonian graphs. I'll leave a couple links in the description to some other fun proofs I've done about Hamiltonian graphs. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.